gigantic rally. Thank you so much for being on here. Got it. Can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you great, Sean. I can see you, hear you. And uh, and I, you know, if you if you want, I'll just say a few words and uh, and yeah, wanna, share with us. Okay. Share with us what's going on. You you know okay. you know way more than most everyone. <laughs> yeah, well, I try to stay I try to stay engaged with what's happening. The, the, what I say now is that this is the time to fight for our faith and family, and that time is now. And uh, if if people that are watching this. And I, I hope it's a lot of young people, really. I mean, I, but, you know, honestly, I know that your audience is, is sort of transcends age just because of the, the uh, quality and the creativity and the beauty and really the love that you show in your, uh, in your very creative talent and uh, your ability to, to bring music to, uh, to a lot of people. So I really just, I'm, I'm so in awe of uh, having uh, developed the relationship with you and what I would tell everybody is this, that our nation has faced moments of crisis uh, many, th many times throughout our history. This, this particular time that we are in is a little bit different than all other times because most of the, most of the times that we faced a crisis, it was from external uh, threats, so to speak. Uh, and you know, even though we went through a, a civil war which was a which was a domestic uh, war between uh, ideas. The ideas were not necessarily about what America was, but what America should be, and it was about you know keeping the country divided from north and south. So that was a that was sort of a domestic taste, if you will, of something that maybe portended the future. And that uh, at that time we had extraordinary leadership out of a great president by the name of President Lincoln, who really is just amazing history, what he was able to keep us, uh, you know, in, in terms of united. And he really, he gave his life for it. So as we, as we, you know, move through the course of history over the last, you know, from that period up until now, we are now faced with another domestic threat. But that domestic threat is really the, the, the rising of something that uh, is a is really a, a godless type of ideology and that's the ideology of socialism and communism and, and worse marxism so i'm standing outside of the of the event so i hope that i'm not getting too over, overcome by the by the traffic behind me but so we we are in this moment and and one of the things that i would i really you know i really really i want to bring across to everybody that listens to this is God is always there and God is with us, but we now have to stand up, step up, speak up and, and sort of wear that, that, that armor, wear that shield, wear that sword, wear that, you know, that, that faith more than we've ever done. I always tell people, Sean, that prayer is the most powerful weapon known to man. Yeah. And it is, it is. Yes. And, and so, God also created warriors, though. You're a warrior. I mean, you are a warrior. When I first met you and I started to get to know you, I'm like, wow, we have these different warriors that have different talents. And God has given us these talents. You know, I, I, I wonder sometimes why I am doing what I'm doing, because I continue to just be incredibly persecuted. But I know I know what I am up against. And I have the lifetime of, of experience that I have been honored by serving our country in different yeah. capacities to yes. know what, you know, what my purpose in life is. And I, and I still am, am uh, still try to struggle every so often to try to figure that out. But, but I know more and more, it has become more and more clear, just like your purpose in life and others that are listening to this, everybody is must now start to understand really at this moment in time, at this moment in history, what is your purpose in life? What are the God-given talents and skills that you have been given? And then step up to it and just let it, let it, you know, run right out through your, the course of your, you know, course through your veins and run right out through your, in your actions. And I think that that's really the most important thing. So I just, what, I what do you just thank you. Go ahead. Sean. Well, no, I just want to ask you, how do we pray? You're, you're talking about praying. You're talking about taking a stand. How do we pray with this Ukraine, Russia situation? Like, 
how do we as Christians, as believers, take a stand in, 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 in navigating this? You know, the news is crazy. They're pushing us into fear, all that kind of stuff. What would you say? Yeah, well, here, here's what I would say. I, would say I, I want everybody to take a deep breath. And I want everybody to realize, and there's, there's a lot of historic, there's some geographic, there are some cultural uh, issues in play in, in uh, Europe and specifically in Eastern Europe. And uh, if you understand anything about history, and I'm not just talking about the last 10 years, I'm talking about the last thousand years, and there's certainly the last four or 500 years, and then, and then bringing it home into the last couple of hundred years. So there are cultural, there are demographic, there are geographic, and there are historic conditions in play. And what I would do is just let everybody know, take a deep breath. Don't listen to these people out of Washington, D.C., these pundits on TV, turn them off. Go back to the Bible and go back and read some of the different, you know, I'm not a Bible quote and verse in person here, but you need to go back in and look at the challenges that were faced by Christians over time and what yeah. is happening now in Europe. So, yeah. I, you know, what I, I am not, I'm not, honestly, I'm not overly concerned about what is happening. The tragedy is, is that, when policy, when, uh, when diplomacy fails, war typically breaks out and people are hurt and injured and worse killed. So there, the, these are going to be things that happen because the, the diplomacy between nations has failed. But that, you know, that's not, a, that's not a good thing, but it's not something that we are going to see grow into a, into a greater crisis. I want to, I feel that in my heart. I just feel that this is a, this is a moment. People are, are uh, in, in the case of Russia, they've taken some steps. In the case of Europe, there has been incredible levels of weakness. So there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It's very real. And I think that what we are up against, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a place now where faith and faith in, in Christ and faith in what we have in each other has got to rise up. I am, I am circumspect. I will use that word about any decision making out of out of this white house and out of our uh, out of our the executive or the legislative branch of government right now i don't think that the federal government is going to do this they're not going to do it right they're 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 i just see mistakes being made everywhere but what has to happen is the people of this country through our elected representatives have to speak up and talk about what does what is the purpose of what is happening in Europe uh, have to do with our lives here in America right now in this moment of history? And I would tell you that again, I'm I'm one of these guys. I'm a warrior, and I've been in the military for a long time, and I've been at these. I've, I've been through this process. I'm one of these. Take a deep breath. Let's you know steady like the phrase steady boys. So we need to be. I want everybody to be steady. If you haven't been saying your prayers. Get out there and say some prayers. Share your sentiments. Share your feelings. But share them. Share them not only you know across across your congregations, but share them up with the elected representatives, whatever level of of uh, of office you want to talk to, whether it's county or state or federal. I want people to understand that in order for us to maintain this beautiful experiment in democracy called a constitutional republic, which that is the form of government that we have meaning that we elect representatives and those representatives then then make you know they they decide how we're going to uh, be as a nation as the united states of america so we got to we've got to engage these people and i i see i see and i feel there's an extraordinary level of weakness in the political class of this country right now and where i am right now where i am tonight is i am with a whole bunch of people who have never been involved in politics and they are you know blacks hispanics you know women uh they're they're you know they're they're from all walks of life you know i mean I, they're and i love it i love it but they've never been involved in politics and many of them are standing up now and saying That's i good. want to do more for my community i want to do more for my country i want to do more for my family every yeah, yeah. single one of them and i just got done listening to about 15 of them i'm going to go back in Tonight, listen to a few more. I'm going to be speaking to them. I already have one, so I'm going to speak again to them again this evening. Every single one of them has raised the issue of faith as being the first and foremost thing that we have to return to. 
That's that good. gives my heart, that, that warms my heart and makes me feel, you know, just so good. So I, I throw it back to you and just say thanks for, uh, for allowing me a little bit of time and, and yeah, God bless well, you for, for well, using your you. talent in the way you do. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. I think that we're all, it's good to hear that word, take a deep breath, steady. You know, people I think are afraid this is going to spill into some crazy huge thing. And so if you don't see that from your end and you think it's, you know, then, then that, that gives me a lot of hope. <laughs> yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't let the, like we I used to tell people, don't let the chihuahuas tree you, right? Don't get, don't get up a tree there with a bunch of dogs barking at you. We'll, we'll take this on, you know, the, the United States of America is a great nation because of the people of the country. Not right now, I think everybody feels like I feel we have, the, the political class has let us down, but it's actually our fault, Sean, because we put them there. And so yeah. now's the time to, re, to reflect on who we are as a, as a Judeo-Christian nation built on Judeo-Christian principles and, and values. And we need to be fearless about those values. Yeah. I'm going to be fearless about those values. I'm going to be fearless about them. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, preach to the highest heavens about who I am as an American. I'm going to let my elected representatives know. I'm going to get engaged in my community. I'm going to stay, stay engaged with my family. I, I, I just, that's how I feel. And I know, I know the way these things uh, play out and the way these senior uh, governmental leaders operate and nobody wants this nobody wants this we have what we have because of a failure and frankly because of weak leadership and that's weak leadership not just here from the united states but weak leadership across other uh, parts of the world mainly in europe so that's the big picture and uh anyway sean <laughs> well hey, I'm, thank you. I'm a, i remain optimistic believe me Awesome, man. I, I love your optimism. Thanks so much for your time. We're gonna go, we're gonna go into a little bit of prayer now for the people of Ukraine. God bless you. I'll see you very soon. Thank you. God bless you. Thank God you. bless America. Thank you. Peace. God bless you guys. So hey, listen. Let's pray on the heels of that. I, I'd love to pray with you guys. Um, I feel like, you know, the when, whenever you face uh, one, I want to say this. I want to say that. There is a lot of biblical prophecy around what we're experiencing right now. Um, and I know some of you guys know that. Maybe others of you don't. Uh, there is a, a, an immense amount of biblical prophecy um, that's taking place right before us about the bear of the north and all this crazy stuff from Revelation. I won't get into that. And there's other people that are better to speak into that than me. Um, but I do know that Matthew 24 says that in the last days, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And Jesus told his disciples, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Kings are going to rise up nations against nations, kingdom against kingdom. We're experiencing that right now. We're seeing it in real time. Like it's real time. We're seeing the bombs happen in real time. They're being live streamed. So I don't know if we've ever experienced a war like this where we're actually able to see at the moment what's happening. And a lot of times it can invoke fear it can invoke uh it can make people disheartened discouraged but like general flynn was saying like you know this 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 kind of thing like what we're experiencing like we have been told this is going to happen and so in the midst of this and i love matthew 24 because it goes on to say that um it goes on to say that because of the increase of wickedness the love of many will grow cold and i think that's our charge as believers is we cannot let love grow cold our love for god our love for our nation our love for our brothers and sisters now listen there is a strong church in the, in ukraine there's a strong church in russia both of these groups do not want their nations to be at war the russian church does not want russia to invade ukraine the ukrainian believers do not want to fight back against the russians i mean we are there those are our brothers and sisters in christ and they're beautiful people but the powers that be and the forces of darkness and these crazy, insane dictators that, like General Flynn said, have feel empowered and unleashed in all of their evil because of weak leadership, like because of weak leadership in our nation has allowed this in many ways to happen. We're standing at a place where innocent people are getting killed and hurt, and it's and it's it's horrible. But I think in the midst of it all, we got to believe that God is raising up a church that is bright 
a church that is strong, a church that the gates of hell will not prevail. And so what I want to do right now is I just want to begin to pray. I, I want us to begin to pray. And I want you, wherever you're at, to just begin lifting your voice. Come on, I want you to lift your voice. Here it is. Wherever you are right now, just begin to lift your voice. Let's begin to ask the Lord. Let's begin to pray. And these are the things we're going to pray. We're going to pray, number one, for peace for the entire region. Number two, wisdom for our leaders to de-escalate the conflict. Number three, we're going to pray for protection for Ukrainians who are being attacked. And number four, we're going to pray for power for the church to preach the gospel and minister to the hurting. Those are the four areas that we're going to pray from right now. So come on, just begin to pray all over the world right now. Let's just let a chorus of explosive intercession be released to heaven. Let's believe right now. I know it feels helpless. The situation feels horrible. A lot of us don't know what to do. We just want to change the channel. But our calling as believers is to pray from a place of faith and not fear, knowing that God's in control, that he's sovereign, that he's on the throne, that he knows what's happening right now, that you know he's not caught off by surprise or caught off guard, that this has been prophesied and spoken and it's going to happen. And so in the midst of this, we gotta pray. Lord, I just ask you right now in the name of Jesus, come on, just lift your voice. I wanna pray, Lord, first for the peace for the entire region. Lord, we just pray, God, that tonight, God, you would release the peace, the shalom, God. We pray, God, that 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 as I prayed even earlier, God, that the chaos would be uh, released upon the camp of the enemy to confuse them as they're trying to shoot missiles and warheads and invade. God, I pray for chaos to come over them, Lord, to take over the the the, the wicked deeds in the hearts of these leaders, God. That you would bring chaos and confusion where they could not carry out their battle plans, God, and that there would be a surreal and overwhelming peace, a peace that passes all understanding that would be released over the Ukraine tonight. Come on, pray with me. Pray with me. Believe with me that peace, a transcendent peace, would be released tonight, that God would, 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 would release angelic intervention. I just believe angelic intervention can take place tonight, even on the battlefield. Uh, number two, I want to pray for our leaders to de-escalate the situation. Lord, we pray right now, God, that you would give wisdom to the leaders, God, the leaders in NATO, the leaders in, in, in Ukraine, the leader, Lord, even the leaders in Russia, the leaders in the U.S., God, give them wisdom to bring this situation to de-escalate things, God. We just pray, God, even, even for those that we don't like or didn't vote for or or people that we, we ideologies that we don't agree with god whoever is in charge right now and has the power and authority we pray god that you would grant them a spirit of wisdom to de-escalate this entire situation and bring peace three god we ask you tonight for the for the ukrainians that are being attacked we ask you for divine protection supernatural protection god wherever they are god the families that are huddled together that are hiding in subways god we pray tonight lord that you would release your angels to protect them lord just like we saw in the book of acts lord uh we ask you god for divine lord that you would hide them even or that they would be hidden tonight lord from the enemy god we pray for the families God, that are huddled together, the kids that are experiencing the trauma of war as the sirens go off in their nation. God, we pray tonight that you would release protection over them tonight, God. We believe, God, and we pray lastly, Lord, we, lastly, we pray for the church of Ukraine and the church of Russia. God, we pray that this would be the greatest hour for the church, that the gospel would be preached louder than it ever has during any war in all of history. God, we believe, God, that right now, as it's crazy with conflict and strife and death and hopelessness and darkness, Lord, we pray, God, that though you didn't cause that, Lord, we pray that in the midst of that, you would turn the hearts of men towards you. And we pray just like you have done throughout all of history, God, that a mighty harvest of souls would come into the kingdom, both in Ukraine and Russia. We pray for a mighty harvest of souls, God, and we pray for the bold preaching and the proclamation of the gospel right now. God, let it happen. Let the church rise up, not cower in fear, but let the church be the answer. Let the church be the response in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you tonight, God, and I just pray over every person out there, even like General Flynn was saying, I just pray over you out there 
that you would, I love that word that he said, just steady, just calm down. Just, I pray in our hearts tonight, God, that we would, would, would resist the urge to move into panic mode, into fear mode. I know that some of you out there are thinking, how is this going to affect me and the economy and the stock market and gas prices and everything? Lord, I just pray tonight, God, that you would release a peace and a, 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 a calmness over every person. Lord, tonight we come into agreement that you are on the throne and you are in control. Lord, that this has not taken you by surprise that you're in the midst of it and you're reigning supreme tonight over the nations of the earth. God, we put our hope and our trust in you. Our trust is not in these leaders of the nations. It's not in the media to tell us the right story. Our trust is in you, that you turn all things to, to, to work for the good of those who love you, God. You, you reveal yourself in all situations, Lord. We just pray, God, that tonight, Lord, uh, that you would release this revelation God, of your never failing love, this revelation that you're here in the midst of it. Lord, you haven't left us as orphans on this earth, God. You haven't left us as orphans. And so I pray that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you're going to get your glory somehow, some way in Jesus' name. Hey, I want to thank you guys for joining. Um, maybe we'll do this again. We'll see. I just was honored that General Flynn would take a couple minutes to speak to us. The man has seen seen some crazy stuff and so that's uh that's a good word uh from him about the current situation and how we all just need to bring it down and 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 i believe that god is moving in the midst of this i pray this was an encouragement please share it um if you want to find out more about our events or what we're doing uh, across the world you can go to lettuceworship.us or hold the line dot live or seanpoint.com let's keep praying for the church of ukraine um, let's keep praying that, that this thing would deescalate and let's pray that people across the world would wake up and they would see that we need to actually, we need the gospel at the center of these nations. We need leaders who fear God. We need, uh, we need all the hidden agendas exposed right now. This is a season where every, every hidden agenda of the enemy in our country, out of our countries needs to be exposed. And we're going to just pray for the righteousness and justice of the Lord to reign supreme. So. God bless you guys. Have a great night. Please share this. I hope this was encouraging to you. I know it was encouraging to me. And I will post these four points. I will post all four of these points on Facebook so you can share them. These are going to be the four points that I will be praying over the coming days and weeks. God bless.